Workaholic, so welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my very first Chatham chocolate. I have seen quite a few booktubers do a kind of like weekly wrap up style video and I wanted to get in on that action, I'm not gonna lie. Um, vlogs just really weren't working for me, they're too they're either too long or too short depending on what you need they're either you can't say anything about the books because you're on like the third book in a series or you um can talk for ages about a single book and then it feels like it's a superfluous video um I, I never got the balance of, of vlogs very well i'm going to try some themed vlogs this year but as a weekly check-in thing it's just it wasn't working for me so i have decided instead that i would get on the bandwagon very much like the nutty narrative leslie from the nutty narrative or Angela from the Literature Science Alliance and I'm sure there are loads of other booktubers that I can't think of at the minute that do kind of like weekly wrap-up style videos um, and I am going to give my shot at it. Um, obviously the channel is Books and Chocoholic, hence the chat and chocolate. I'm going to chat about the books and I'm going to eat some chocolate while I do so. I'm going to start out with the chocolate. I think that's going to be quite a decent little ritual for anyone who doesn't give a fuck. You just can skip the intro section. Um, and I have this, um, it's called um, Wow Wool. Um, it says Malaga on it. It was given to me by some Polish friends for Christmas. Um, it says Wow Wool, which Sounds more Polish, like it sounds like it should be Vavo, uh, but it says Malaga on it. So I'm assuming it's actually Spanish chocolate, but I have no idea about anything to do with this chocolate. So I'm just going to give it a go. It's uh, very shiny. Let's try it. It's a gooey one. Ooh, look, right from the get go, it's just falling apart. All right, let's try a bit. Mm, not great. I'm mm fairly -mm. certain that was some kind of chocolate liqueur. Yep, 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 yep. That was a bad, bad start. I'm talking of bad starts. I might as well get into the books. I'm obviously going to talk first about the books that I have read, and then I will talk about the book that I, the books I'm currently reading, and then the books I'm about to start. So, talking about books that I have read, the book I started out the year with was. The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rina Brosner. This one is, I, I thought it was YA, it turns out it's adult um, fantasy standalone that is based on Hungarian mythology. And it is about like the descendants of King Solomon, um, so Jewish peoples uh, in uh, Eastern Europe during the 14th century which is when kind of the general persecution against uh, Jewish people started to like amp up again um and this one is quite possibly going to be my most disappointing book of the year and it was the first book I read I picked this book up because I love Rena Rosner I love well I loved her first book um the uh Sisters of the Winterwood and <laughs> This one, it was like a not as good version of that. Like it just had more adult themes, but less, like the, the characters felt less relatable. The writing style was very similar to the original, but in like a carbon copy kind of way, instead of like a, she has a specific style voice and more just, oh, this is the only way she knows how to write. So I picked this up thinking this is gonna be a solid win. I know I'm gonna love this one. This is a great one to start the year with. And it was a major disappointment. This one ended up with two stars. The next book that I completed was The Constant Princess by Philippa Gregory. This one is the first book in the second series that she has surrounding like the British, um, the British monarchy. So she has, there were originally two separate series. One was The Cousin's War and the others was The Tudor Court until she got, I think it was The King's Curse out, uh, which then joined the two through Margaret Pole. Um, but I'm still counting them as separate series because the series are long, one to five books, one to nine books. It was too much for me to count as one big series. So because I binge read series, I decided to like mentally separate the two. So I still kept them as Tudor Court 
and um, which is this one and the um cousin's war which i've already read so this is the first one in the tudor court series and we follow catherine of aragon i did enjoy this book i ended up giving it i think three 0.5 stars. Um, I did have some problems with the depictions of Spain, obviously because I live in Spain. I've studied a huge amount of Spanish history through school. It was my favourite subject in school. Um, I took extra classes of history in school specifically. I actually befriended my history teacher. So I did take a lot of history classes and a lot of them were specifically surrounding the Reyes Católicos, which are Isabel the, uh, Isabel the First of Castile and Ferdinand the Second of Aragon. And she is obviously the daughter of both. And um, the thing is, is to me, the depictions of Spain very much like othered Spain, as though Spain had this completely different construct of society back then. And they really freaking did. And they were very similar to England in a decent amount of ways. You know, they were the biggest forces. Spain, England and France were the biggest forces, you know, at the time. So, you know, it, it really othered Spain for no reason. And um, so the depictions of Spain in here really bothered me, which definitely docked it a decent like point, if not more. Um, but for the most part, I did really enjoy it. I really, really loved uh, the relationship that we have between Catherine and Arthur. For those of you who don't know, the reason that Henry managed to, well, was attempting to divorce uh, Catherine was on the ground that she had previously married his brother. And there is a line in the Bible that's like, you know, if you lie with your brother's wife, you're, um, you shall be like childless, essentially. Um, and because she wasn't giving him any sons, he decided that it was because she had shagged his brother, even though she had said that she ha was a virgin and hadn't consummated her marriage. Um, and so in this one, we do actually get her relationship with Arthur before we get her relationship with Henry. And I really, really liked that aspect. I really loved Arthur as a character. Arthur as a character was phenomenal. We know very little about Arthur. He got kind of like forgotten in history, aside from the fact that he was like the cause of Henry's ability to at least consider divorcing Catherine. Um, so it was it was an interesting one. I enjoyed it for the most part, aside from the problems that I had with the depictions of Spain, really liked it, especially the relationship between her and Arthur. The only digital book that I have read this week is uh, Centaur and Sensibility, which is by Quemby Olsen. It's a short story that is 56 pages long, I think, and it was written for charity. It was one that I pre-ordered. It was just a really cute little short story that I, I read and I, I had a really good time with it. I actually had trouble getting through with it because my card like changed, like, it, like the previous one expired and I got a new one and I forgot to update it on my Amazon. So it took like an extra day for it to come. So it, it came out on the third and I read it on the fourth. Um, it was a really fun time and it was very, very sweet. It's about a girl who is about to enter into an arranged marriage, does not want to enter into said arranged marriage. So she up and just leaves and um, she you know goes wandering about through this forest to try and get away from her family and um, then kind of gets lost in this forest even though it seems like it should be very straight narrow you know go this way she gets lost in the forest and then comes upon a centaur and tries to get him to help her get out of this forest and find her way and it's a romance that ensues between the two it is of course insta love because why wouldn't it be <laughs> it's a short story but it's very cute it was very amusing it had Quimby's signature uh, authorial voice which i really loved and for the most part i would just if you like Quimby olsen go go read it you know it's for a good cause it's adorable just have fun with it it's definitely what you need like it's fantastic for readathons and also just great if you're in a slump fantastic way to get out of it now moving into current reads i have um, the second book in the Tudor Court series, which is Three Sisters, Three Queens. This one I am currently about halfway through. And this one is uh, following Margaret. It, it, say, it says it's following Margaret Tudor, Catherine of Aragon and Mary Tudor. That's not entirely true. Um, because we are only getting it from Margaret's perspective. Margaret was um, King Henry VIII's older sister who eventually became um, Queen of Scotland. She married the King of Scotland, became Queen of Scotland, then she became Queen Regent of Scotland over her son. Um, 
and she is the uh, ancestor of Mary Queen of Scots. She is the grandmother, I believe. Yeah, the grandmother of Mary Queen of Scots and great grandmother to James I of England. So, you know, interesting lady. Um, she is very young at the beginning of this book and she behaves very brattishly and very like almost teenage angsty kind of way. Um, and so I wasn't sure how I would feel about this one because she's a very frustrating character to read and a very infuriating character. Um, and do you know what? She's still a very infuriating character to read, but I have decided that I like it. <laughs> I've just decided that it's like, yeah, okay. I don't need you to be a likable main character. I need you to be, I need to be able to understand you. And I can, I understand her reasoning. I understand her thought process. I understand like what parts of her biases and parts of her upbringing and parts of her life would make her feel the way she does. So I do appreciate that. And um, I understand this story. This is one of the ones that actually does genuinely benefit from me having read other books in the series. While these books are technically companion novels and you can just read them however you want, I have decided to read them in chronological order. Um, now this one runs parallel to The Constant Princess that I read earlier on this week. Um, this one, these kind of run parallel. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting one because obviously we've already had Catherine's perspective. So now we're getting... Um, Margaret's perspective it is actually a shame in a way that we're not going to get Mary's perspective but Mary did die substantially younger than the other two so there's that um anyway it it's an, an enjoyable read if not a slightly infuriating read because Margaret is a very difficult character to follow her mindset but enjoyable nonetheless and the last book that I plan on reading this week is Parasite this is one I've yet to start it is currently uh, Friday so I do have the whole weekend um to finish up this one and start this one. This one is the first book in the Parasitology series by Myra Grant. Parasitology is the only works by Myra Grant that I have yet to read. Um, I have loved all of her other books so I'm very excited for this one and this is a sci-fi dystopian that is set around a world in the future in which we have managed to cure cancer. We are immune to pretty much everything. It's very difficult for us to die. We don't get diseases or any kind of illnesses anymore and this is due to the um, intestinal bodyguard TM, which is a parasite that lives in our bodies that helps cure us of these diseases. However, now the parasite is beginning to like have a will of its own and want to, wants to take over its host. Um, so we're following this story, um, I suspect from, you know, uh, I, I, I'm hoping multiple perspectives, but I'm assuming at least someone that has some kind of knowledge about what on earth is going on. Because one of the things I really, really appreciate about Myra Grant is that she writes characters that know their shit. You'd have no dumb bitch energy going on with Myra Grant, which, oh my God, is necessary. You have people that either they know their shit or they go above and beyond to find out what the fuck is going on? And I love that about her. So I'm very, very excited to be getting into this one. So continuing on with these, have concluded these and obviously um, Centaur and Sensibility. So for the most part, decent reading week. I think this is a pretty good start to the month. I mean, it's slightly over a week because obviously I started this one on the 1st of January and I finished it on the 2nd. So I have had Sunday in as well. So it's a slightly longer week than usual, but uh, also I'm not at work. So I feel like I could get a lot more done than I normally would. But regardless, this is what my stack is looking like. And um, yeah, I will catch you in the next one. So thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.